Good morning, good morning. How is everyone on today? Happy Tuesday to you. Happy Tuesday to you. I wanted to talk to you. First, I have so many different stories that, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about. But one of them is Malcolm X daughter, uh, Malika Shabazz. She was found dead in her New York City home. Um, she's the daughter of Malcolm X. She was found dead Monday inside her Brooklyn home. Uh, Malika Shabazz, 56, was discovered by her daughter inside the Midwood residence at about 4.40 p.m., and this was yesterday. Investigators do not suspect foul play, sources said. An autopsy will be de will determine Shabazz's cause of death. Um, Bernice King, the daughter of Martin Luther King Jr., said in a post on Twitter that she is deeply saddened by the death of Malika Shabazz. She says her heart goes out to her family. The descendants of Dr. Betty Shabazz and Malcolm X, Dr. Shabazz was pregnant with Malika and her twin sister Malik when brother Malcolm was assassinated. Malika Shabazz and her twin sister Malik are the youngest of six daughters of Malcolm X and his wife, Betty Shabazz. So uh, my condolences to the uh, Malcolm X and um, Bet Dr. Betty Shabazz family. Uh, you know, condolences to them. The family uh, may, you know, Malika Shabazz rest in peace um, through all of this. And even friends and family that knew them and that was close with them, uh, may they have peace and, and uh, you know, and condolences as they grieve a loss of a loved one, friends and family. Um, it's, you know, it's sad to always hear about, you know, uh, a lot of uh, black people continually to pass away. And she was pretty young, you know. She was young. She was only 56. And so that is pretty young. Um, and so, again, condolences to the family, uh, especially during this time. Because, you know, when you lose people during the holidays, it even is harder. And then, you know, as the holidays come up again, they're no longer there. And the usually the festivities and and what you're doing, you know, the activities and things are not the same. So again, condolences to that family. And then let's talk about, can you bring a gun to the airport? Can you bring a gun to the airport? You know, up at the um, Atlanta airport, you know, there was a man traveling with a gun and it went off. You know, and so this article is saying a day after a gun was fired inside the Atlanta airport, it was business as usual as busy travelers made their way to gates through security checkpoints. But police are still looking for Kelly Wells, a convicted felon who accidentally fired a gun inside Hartsville Jackson International Airport. There is now a warrant for his arrest. Authorities say Wells launched for his bag at the security checkpoint, setting the gun off inside. Local defense attorney Paige Pat or Paige Pate says you can bring your gun to the airport, but there are exceptions. Well, Georgia law specifically allows some to take a gun through the airport as long as they have a carry permit and they're within the public areas of the airport outside of the security screening area. Uh, Pate said, you know, I'm not really sure how to pronounce this person's name. It could be Pate, um, said. That means in your car, outside areas, or any place before going to security. But once you get to TSA screening, you cannot take that firearm, loaded or unloaded, through that checkpoint. It's a violation of both Georgia law. Pate explained. So I'm just going to go with P-A-T-E, Pate. And I forgive me for chopping up his name if that's not how you pronounce it. And there are also options that you take if you take your gun to a checkpoint. If you carry a permit and TSA says we found the gun, then you have a right to simply take the gun out of the airport and not be charged with any crime at all. If you don't have a carry permit and TSA finds a gun, then you're going to be charged with a state misdemeanor, which is a very low level offense probably a fine, maybe probation, certainly no jail time, is what P-A-T-E says, Pate. Now, traveling with a gun is permitted, but there are restrictions. 
if you have a firearm, you can travel with it, but it has to be in a checked bag. You have to uh, declare it to the, to the airline and you have to pack it in such a way that it's unloaded and it's in a hard carrying case in your luggage. So you can do it, but you can't have it with you on the plane, he says. And he says also carrying the gun into the airport without disarming it, not having a permit, and even the gun being discharged are considered misdemeanors. However, the case of Kenny Wells is a little different. If you are found in possession of a firearms and you have a prior felony conviction or you're on probation for that particular felony offense, then it's a state felony and it's a federal felony and both federal and state penalties can carry some significant prison time. Bottom line, the best thing to do is double check your carry-on bag and be sure to place your gun in your checked luggage according to PATE. <laughs> Depending on the violation, it could cost thousands of dollars if you're charged with more than one misdemeanor. So, um, you know, not sure what to tell Kenny Wells. Um, not sure what's going to happen with this, this, uh, young man here, or I'm not sure how old he is. Uh, Kenny Wells, he's a convicted felon. And he had a gun with him that accidentally went off. Um, and he's a convicted felon. And there is a warrant out for his arrest. Okay. And then we have um, Kevin Spacey. Near, he's ordered to pay nearly $31 million to number 39 House of Cards production company. Now that's a big chunk of money. That's not no little chunk change. That's a big chunk of money. Um, and it says an arbitrator has ordered Kevin Spacey to pay almost $31 million to media rights capital, the production company behind house of cards, the next flick series in which the actor starred for five seasons until he was fired in 2017. The revelation came in a petition filed Monday in Los Angeles County superior court in which MRC Media Rights Capital is asking the court to confirm the award in its favor and enter judgment against Spacey and his long out and producing companies. Spacey and MRC have been battling in the years since the actor was dismissed from the production over allegations of misconduct on and off the set. In its filing, MRC states in October of 2020, an arbitrator found Spacey repeatedly breached his contractual obligations while starring as Frank Underwood on the Emmy-winning uh, Emmy show and that his behavior rendered him and his affiliate entities liable for the millions of dollars lost by MRC. MRC says the company suspended Spacey following CNN's report in 2017 in which several current and former members of the House of Cards production staff came forward with allegations of sexual harassment. One person also accused Spacey, who was an executive producer on the series, of sexual assault. MRC had no knowledge whatsoever of any such conduct by Spacey, which any cast or crew associated with the show, the filing states. Shortly before CNN's report, actor Anthony Rapp told BuzzFeed News that the actor made a sexual advance toward him at a party in 1986 when he was 14 years old. And you probably all, if you've been following certain stories, you've probably remember that when he said that um, Kevin Spacey made in a sexual advance at him at a party in 86 and he was 14 um, at that time. I remember that story. You know, um, so MRC says it's halted the production to address any concerns of the show's cast and crew in wake of the allegations, according to the filing. Following Rapp's claim, Spacey issued a statement claiming he did not recall the incident and apologized for what he, what he said would have been deeply inappropriate drunken behavior. After Spacey was terminated, the, positions, the petition says that MRC had to rewrite the entire season to omit Spacey's character and to shorten season six from 13 to eight episodes to meet delivery to meet delivery deadlines and suffer monetary losses as a result. Following the arbitrator's decision, MRC released a statement on the ruling, the safety of our employees, 
sets, and work environments is of paramount importance to MRC and why we set out to push for accountability. CNN has reached out to Spacey's attorneys for comment. So, uh, you know, I do remember that story some time ago, um, and he did come out and apologize. He didn't recall it, and he said he was sorry. Um, so they are asking for money. That's quite a bit of money. $31 million is quite a bit of money. Okay. And then um, I'm not sure what the big deal is with Kim Kardashian, whereas Yeezy's doing outing with Pete Davidson. Um, you know, she's wearing, you know, Kanye West brand. And, you know, they are divorced. But who cares about them being together? Um, you know, she can date who she wants to date, right? She's not married anymore. Um, but she's quite older than him. She's 41 and he's 28. And, you know, Pete Davidson is, uh, he's, you know, plays on the Saturday Night Live show, you know, and, um, they're talking about how they were seen holding hands and, um, they were point, you know, they were honing in on what she was wearing. And then someone came back and said, you know, look at what he's wearing. And they're saying that she is smitten with him because he's treating her nice. And they also, um, celebrated, excuse me, y'all. It's like all these advertisements comes up on your computer when you're trying to, you know, talk about something It's getting on my nerves. <laughs> um, you know, and so they said they couldn't believe that they were highlighting and spotlighting what she was wearing, but look at what Pete Davidson was wearing. And then also they said that they were at the Knott's Berry Forum, you know, uh, kissing and or spotted holding hands and then they kissed or whatever. You know, just some foolish stuff that, that people really need to just, why? What's the big deal? These people don't pay your bills. I, I hope they're not. I mean, I, it doesn't seem like they're paying people's bills, you know they're getting their bills paid by traction and all that stuff. And even me talking about the story, but I'm talking about it because I just don't think what the big deal is. They do what they want to do. And they were said they celebrated his birthday, um, at Chris Jenner's Palm Springs home where they were joined by flavor Flay, Davidson, Kardashian West and Jenner 66. And they all match for the occasion and some skims loungewear collection. So, um, they said they were more affectionate and more serious. Uh, and she's, uh, you know, she's smitten, which I don't understand how quick you can be smitten some by somebody that fast when you were married for, you know, with someone else that you were supposed to be smitten with and in love with. And now you're smitten by somebody else just that quick. It's just really silliness to me. And so let's move on. Let's talk about the onion recall. The, um, you know, the, there have been an onion recall before, and I believe it was what last month and, I like onions, you know, when you're cooking food and this is the time of year that a lot of people will purchase onions because onions goes in dressing, onion goes in gravy, you know, uh, onions can go in potato salad, you know, there's an onions, people put onions in green beans when they're making, uh, their green bean, green beans, or even green bean casserole, you know, um, onions go in a lot of things. And so now there is a recall right here again. The FDA is warning that the great onion recall of 2021 has expanded yet again. Um, two more produce brands have issued recalls of whole onions due to ongoing salmonella concerns, according to two notices from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The company's Potandum Produce and Awesome Farms Produce Incorporated issued recalls last week they are advising people to throw the affected onions away if found and wash and sanitize any surfaces that may have come in contact with the affected produce so here's what you need to know about the latest onion recalls from these two companies with awesome forms produce produce incorporated they issued a voluntary recall of its whole red yellow and white onions from chihuahua mexico sent to tr retailers in wisconsin Illinois, Michigan, and Pennsylvania between July 13th and August 18th. The onions were sold in two pound to 50 pound packages and the advisory only covers bags of onions with the label produce of Mexico. Awesome notes that although the onions in question were sold this past summer and are therefore past their shelf life, the company is issuing the recall out of an abundance of caution. Okay. 
So um, if you do have those onions, please get rid of them. Do not eat any onions. Wash, wash up very well your countertops. You know, use some type of a disinfectant, you know, and some hot soapy water to clean your countertops, your sinks, you know, any dishes, you know, you may have used your cutting board, you know, just really clean it up really good. Make sure your hands are really clean, you know, and clean up everything because you just don't want, you know, uh, to, to infect anyone, get anyone sick. And especially if you're having family over or friends and family and a big dinner, or even a small dinner, you just don't want, you know, to have an outcome of someone getting really ill or having to take a trip to the urgent care or emergency room because of the recall on these onions. Uh, and then Potandum Produce, same thing, you know, making sure you wash up everything because it says they issued their recall on November 15th, which was last week. That included three and five pound bags of whole yellow onions and two pound bags of whole white onions sold under the Green Giant Fresh brand that were distributed to a center in Champaign, Illinois between July 15th and August 22nd. No other Green Giant products were affected by this recall. These onions were also distributed over the summer, meaning that they were also past their shelf life when the recall notice was issued by the company. Even though these onions may have been past their shelf life, Potandum Produce said that the onions may have been used in meals that have been stored in consumers' freezers and issued the recall out of abundance of caution. So according to the FDA and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, there have been 892 illnesses linked to salmonella contamination from whole fresh onions in 38 states and Puerto Rico as of November 12, 2021. Last month, the CDC and FDA urged people to throw out onions from multiple sources, including some that are part of popular meal kits such as Hello Fresh. So uh, make sure uh, that you definitely, you know, want to throw out those onions. And if you are a person that has received, you know, a care package, um, you know, where you go and pick up a food box because they do still give out a food. There's still a lot of food giveaways throughout people's cities, you know, throw out the onions if they're in there. I mean, like it's, you know, it's, it's telling you what to do, but I would say just be on the caution side. Again, you don't want anyone to get sick. And you don't want to get sick and your family members as well. And again, to clean up after yourselves very well. And then there was a Kool-Aid recall at Costco, small pieces of metal glass found in drink mix. And I love Kool-Aid, you guys. I have to say I love Kool-Aid. Man, I'll make Kool-Aid. That's like old school. When we were growing up, we didn't drink a lot. We had Pepsis at our house, you know, and some sodas like the Sun Kiss and Fantas and things like that. But mainly we, we drank Kool-Aid as children and we love Kool-Aid, you know. And so as over the years, we've gotten fancy with it by adding a can of frozen lemonade or a lemon, some type of lemon juice, to, to, you know, to, to pump it up and, and then add a lot more sugar, you know, to really make that down uh, to earth southern sweet Kool-Aid, you know, you know, that back east or that Midwest southern, you know, sweet, good, sour, sweet Kool-Aid. And I love Kool-Aid, man. I still, to this day, people laugh at me, my family and friends, because they say, look at you, you know, going to make you some Kool-Aid. And so I keep it in my refrigerator, you know, and it was funny because I had some friends, visitors over and they was like, I said, would you like some Kool-Aid? They said no. And it was funny. But then like when my mom got home, she was like, oh, you didn't offer me any Kool-Aid. I said, you didn't want any Kool-Aid. But it was like this. I love Kool-Aid. You know, I like to make my Kool-Aid. Matter of fact, I got to make a trip to the store to get some more Kool-Aid because <laughs> I love me some Kool-Aid. But Kraft Heinz has recalled a Kool-Aid Tropical Punch drink mix sold at Costco because the product may contain very small pieces of metal or glass. The recalled punch mix is packaged in an 82.5 ounce can and is labeled as Costco item number 95740. So most cities and states have a Costco, right? So they posted the recall on this website on Friday, November 12th. The Kool-Aid product has best when used by dates of August 31st, 2023 and September 1st, 2023. Kraft Heinz and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, the organizations which spearheaded the recall urged customers to return the drink mix to Costco for a real, excuse me, for a full refund. For more information about the recall, consumers are encouraged to call Kraft Heinz Consumer Relations. The number is 855 713-9237 between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.
okay? This is the latest in a string of food-related recalls recently including onions, chicken meals, cupcakes, and ground turkey. So, you know what? Um, Trader Joe's. Chicken meals might have bones in them, the USDA warns. Isn't that crazy? Chili lime chicken burgers. And that sounds good. Chili lime chicken burgers and spinach feta chicken sliders. Um, that does sound good to me. But it says there have been a recall because they might be contaminated with bone fragments. Now, I've never had any of them before. It just sounded good by the title. You know, chili lime chicken burgers and spinach feta chicken sliders. You know, Innovative Solutions Incorporated, the company that produced the chicken patties, recalled about 97,887 pounds of the product because of the potential bone fragment contamination, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food Safety and Inspection Services, FSIS. S, okay, the affected products were shipped to retailers across the country, primarily Trader Joe's, and bear the establishment number EST.P-8276. The chicken patty products were produced between August 16th to September 29th, 2021, and the following products fall under the recall. A one-pound cardboard packages containing four pieces um, of Trader Joe's Chili Lime Chicken Burgers with lock codes 2281, 2291, 2311, 2351, 2361, 2371, 2441, 2571, 2551, 2552, 2551, 2551, 2551, 2551, 2551, 2551, 2551, 2551, Feta chicken sliders with lot codes of 2361 or 2631 represented on the label. The company discovered the problem after consumers reported finding bone fragments in the chicken products. The USDA said that there have been no reports of illness or injury due, due to the consumption of the affected products. People concerned about illness or injury arising from this product should contact a health care provider. The USDA is urging people who have the products in their freezers to throw them away or return them to their place of purchase. Anyone with questions about the recall should direct their inquiries to Frank Sauber, President, Innovative Solutions Incorporated at 206-365-7200 and at frank at innovative solutions incorporated.us. And so um, there is a lot of, you know, these recalls, and then let's go and talk uh, talk about, um, let's see if we can find that one, the Tasty Cake Cupcakes. Now, I've seen these Tasty Cakes at, um, I believe, the 99 cent store. So if you, if you live in a, in a city that, res, that, um, that live in, reside in a city that have taste that carries, that has a 99 cent store, or they carry Tasty Cake Cupcakes, they might have metal in them, the FDA warns. So... Flower Foods, the manufacturer of Tasty Cake Cupcakes, and I've never actually had Tasty Cake Cupcakes. I've seen them in the 99 cent store in the area that I reside in, um, but I've never tried them before. Uh, I don't know if they're good or not, but they're on the shelf. They sell, people buy them. But anyway, they've recalled some brands of the cupcakes being sold in multiple states because they might be contaminated with tiny fragments of metal mesh wire, according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Okay, the FDA said Flower Foods initiated a voluntary recall following notification by a vendor of the possible contamination in a supply ingredient. No reported injuries have occurred because of this incident. The recalled um, cupcakes were distributed to retailers in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, as well as Delaware, Maryland, New York, Washington, D.C., Virginia, and West Virginia. And here are the following brands of Tasty Cake Cupcakes have been recalled according to the FDA. The Tasty Cake Chocolate Cupcakes, 12.75 ounces, two counts packs, six in a box, UPC number 025-00-25600-00219-3, and enjoy by dates of December 14th, 18th, and 21. And then you have the Tasty Cake Cream Filled Chocolate Cupcakes, 14.75 ounces, two cup, two count packs, six in a box, UPS number 0-25600-00223-0 and enjoy by dates of December 14th and 18th. 
Then you have Tasty Cake Buttercream Ice Cream Filled Chocolate Cupcake. Mmm. 14.74 ounces. Two count pack. Six in a box. UPC number 0-25600-00230-8. And enjoy by dates of December 14th and 18th. And then you have the Tasty Cake Buttercream Ice Cream Filled Chocolate Cupcake Sold Individually. UPC number 0-25600-00004-5 and enjoy by date of December 18th. The FDA is urging consumers to not eat the products and either discard them or return them to where they were purchased. To find out more information about the recall, call the Flower Foods Consumer Relations Center at 866-245-8921. Their hours are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard on weekdays or Eastern Standard Time, or Eastern Time on weekdays. You can also send them an email on their website. So I gave you that information because, again, a lot of people might not be paying attention to what's going on because a lot of people are preparing for festivities. They're traveling. You know, they're in and out. They're still trying to go to work and still prepare their meals and talking about arrangements. Then you have children maybe in school or out of school this week. I'm not sure when your kids get out of school. Um, maybe it's Wednesday because some schools are the last day for them is Wednesday. And then they are, you know, then they have through Thanksgiving and then that Monday off and come back that Tuesday or Wednesday of the, you know, of next week. And then there's maybe students that are already out of school. So whatever is happening, your college key, uh, uh, child, college students, you know, elementary, high school, whatever is happening, going on, traveling back and forth, communicating with family members, making arrangements. Some people may not be reading the news. So um, I just wanted to bring this information to you all to let you know about some things that's going on you know, out here in our world, you know, um, and then that I want you to know that you need to be careful when you go out, especially shopping these days. And there may be some copycats. They may try to start copycatting these things in your city or your state, but there was a back to back flash mob lootings in San Francisco area, alarming experts, Fox News reports. There were robberies. And what they were doing is they were jumping out of cars and running into stores and robbing them. And because, and I, I've been to San Francisco, I like going there. You know, it was a fun time for me to go. I'd like to return there sometime in the future. However, um, what's happening is there is no accountability for anyone anymore because what happened is they changed, um, they changed the, the law now, um, as far as, um, you know, the, um, they changed the law. So if you don't steal anything over $950, then, uh, you know, worth of property, then it's not a felony anymore. It's a felony. Um, if it goes over $950, so uh, they're stealing things. And when I went to visit San Francisco a few years ago, I actually happened to see, you know, me and my party happened to see, you know, people stealing, even in the, the Rite Aid or what is it, the CVS, excuse me, pharmacy, and they just would steal. And the security is standing right there. And all they can do, they can't chase them anymore. A lot of companies do not want their employees chasing um, down, uh, criminals, robbers, thieves, whatever. So they tell them don't come in here anymore. And I told you not to come in here anymore. You're trespassing. That's pretty much it. But they, they are told not to chase down robbers anymore. So they know that they can go in and steal something and run out of the store and they're not going to be chased. They're going to get away with it. And now that they have raised the, uh, limit to not, cause California is trying to keep people out of jail. That's what they're doing. You know, they're trying to keep people out of jail and, you know, and so what they're doing now, they've raised it. So now it's like, hey, if I don't go over $950, then let me steal $949 worth of property. And that's what's really going on. I mean, and it's a fel it's a if it's a felony, the officer can take an action. But if it's a misdemeanor, the arrest has to be a private person's arrest. And that makes a difference because they have to be willing to do it. And there are a lot of people not willing to chase down these crooks anymore, these criminals. They're just not. It's like, I'm not going to get out there and I might get killed. I might slip and fall, hurt myself. And they are not going to pay your bills for any injuries that happen to you. They're not going to want to pay any settlements. They don't want to do that. So a lot of people 
or employ security experts are advising that the best precaution precaution people can take during such incidents is not intervening so they're telling them not to and we watch that when we travel to san francisco like they're just stealing out the store and we're like you know and we don't you know it's like really they're not doing anything i mean like there's a big lot and i watched this lady i was in big lots about two years about a year probably a year a year ago it's like a year ago year year and a half ago I watched this lady, she was standing, I was looking at something on this, like, uh, you know, this round, it's like a display, and this lady actually um, was stealing jewelry off of this display, just stealing it, and ripping open, tearing open the packages, right next to me, and I looked, and I'm like, wow, how bold, you know what I mean, like, how literally bold, and I just walked away, and when I got to the register, you know, they, I, I just felt uncomfortable with that, you know, but hey, she did it, but they were more or less like, um, they know she comes in here all the time and the, the manager knows, and there's nothing they can do to her. But my concern with this, if you are allowing people to steal out your store when they're in the store, in the act, and you know, a lot of the stores do have cameras. Some of them say they don't work, but this store has cameras that do work this big lots. Well, anyway, I look at it like this. When people say, mind your own business, yes, we should. But guess what? When we're minding our own business and the stores are not doing anything about it, do you not know that that cost is placed back on you? Because the more that people steal, the prices go up through the roof. And we've seen gas prices up through the roof. We've seen a lot of stuff, groceries, all types of stuff. Everything is more expensive, period. I mean, like through the roof. I mean, you can go in a store now where stuff was less. That's why you see a lot of people shopping in the Dollar Trees, the Dollar Generals, Family Dollar, um, uh, 99 cent stores. And those stores are not even 99 cent and a dollar because Family Dollar has always been a dollar and up. And most stuff in their stores is, is not a dollar. It's over a dollar. Um, dollar Tree is now what? A dollar 25. The 99 cent store is 99 cent and more. So if you go in there and buy a name brand jar of mayonnaise, you know, uh, best foods or craft or whatever. But if you go and buy a name brand, you're going to pay probably either $2.99 or $3.99. They have name brand stuff in their store, but they have raised their prices. And a lot of stuff is going up and the pr it's being placed back on the consumer. And if they're not uh, able to, uh, you know, curb the the theft that's going on in these stores the prices are going to get even more out of hand and that's the concern that we should have as taxpayers people that have that go and actually legitimately pay for their merchandise and they're not stealing it the price is going to be placed back on us why the thieves are not working or not paying for their stuff and steady stealing it and it puts a dent in the economy and it really causes a problem for People that are honest working people are honest retired people that have made their money and are living off a certain income or fixed income or pension or retirement or whatever it is. But those those higher prices from people stealing, criminal stealing, it's going is being placed currently. And it's not just going to, it is because you can see it now being placed back on the uh the paying consumer versus the non-paying consumer. And so it, it really is a situation where, you know, we can remain silent and everything and not get involved because I wouldn't want to, you know, get hurt, you know, uh, minding somebody else's business, which is the responsibility of the stores to make sure that they are taking care of their security in their store. Now, in the store, you should handle that. Outside the store, they, you know, chasing them, I, I you know, hey, I wouldn't want to be chasing anybody down. Um, you know, and I know some people, you know, when it comes to your purses and your private thing, you know, private merchandise, you may want to, or your private property, private property may want to chase someone down and clip them or whatever, you know, the case may be. And hopefully they don't have a gun, you know, and things like that. But some people say, just give it to them, you know, cause you can't replace a life, but you can replace your other things. You can cancel your bait card, 
you know, and that's why a lot of people don't carry a lot of cash on them anymore, just a certain amount, just for emergencies, maybe to buy some food or take public transportation, if that's what you would need to do, if your car broke down or Uber, or just to have a little money on you for emergencies. Other than that, a lot of people do not carry cash like that. They, they, cause you know, you can cancel your bank card if someone steals your purse or, ste you know, robs you or something like that. And I just pray for everybody's safety, man, because reading this, them running into the store, um, running into the store, um, you know, and, and, and just stealing is crazy, you know, and jumping out of cars and, and they're hitting high end stores. Um, you know, and, and so what, um, Hector Alvarez, a corporate security expert with more than 15 years of training, he told ABC channel 10, find a way to duck into a corner, get behind something and literally become spam. Don't become part of the noise. Okay. About 80 people. And this is what happened. About 80 people dressed in ski masks on with crowbars stormed a Nordstrom location in Wall Creek on Saturday night. The town is located about 30 minutes from San Francisco. If you've ever been to Wall Creek, California, Walnut Creek, excuse me, Walnut Creek, California, the night prior, multiple people broke the windows of a Louis Vuitton and emptied out the store of its high end merchandise. Eight people were arrested in connection to that looting. And then, um, Police in Walnut Creek told Fox News on Sunday evening that it's unclear at this time if the two robberies are connected. The three people arrested during the Walnut Creek incident are from San Francisco and Oakland. Three people are under arrest today following an organized theft at the Broadway Plaza, Norseman Walnut Creek last night. Police are investigating what was clearly a planned event with the initial calls coming into the department about cars driving recklessly in the area shortly before 9 p.m., Walnut Creek police said in a press statement, so they were driving recklessly, uh, you know, probably scaring people, you know, they had to jump out the way. That's what it sounds like being reckless, you know, trying to, they were a distraction. So the reckless driving was a distraction to distract other people and, you know, so that they could do it. So the police arrested Dana Dawson, 30 of San Francisco on gun charges, Joshua Underwood, 32 of San Francisco, Rodney Robinson, 18 of Oakland for allegedly stealing from the store and assaulting two Nordstrom employees, pepper spraying one of them. Police are investigating surveillance footage from Saturday night to identify the other suspects and noted the remaining participants in this criminal mob fled from the area in cars at high speeds. The San Francisco area has been hit with repeated incidents of looting and smash and grab incidents in recent months. The city's central district, a popular tourist destination, saw a staggering 753% increase in car break-ins from May 2020 to May 2021. Robbery incidents, however, are down 4.9% so far this year when compared to last, according to San Francisco police data released last week. Chain stores such as Walgreens and Safeway, and Safeway is a grocery store, have also permanently closed locations in the city or cut back hours over the increase in shoplifting crimes. And Walgreens is going to be closing five more stores uh, in San Francisco due to theft. And both Alvarez and Reed told ABC 10 that without strong accountability, the problem could get worse. And in Walnut Creek, police are already faced, uh, bracing for the suspects to strike again. The Walnut Creek Police Department is actively monitoring intelligence that indicates the group of thieves who stole from the Broadway Plaza Nordstrom last night are considering similar activity later today. The city tweeted from its official Twitter account uh, Sunday night. And this has not been confirmed, but out of an abundance of caution, we are alerting business and residents to be prepared. At Walnut Creek PD is calling out additional officers and reserves, and some stores may consider closing early or taking other precautions. There is not a specific time or target known right now. As we get more information, we will share. So, um, you know, that's really sad that that's happening. And that's why I was saying nowadays, you know, there's no accountability. You know, um, it's just no accountability anymore. And, and people are just running in stores. They're stealing. They're running out. Um, there's no accountability because they, again, in California, raised it up to $950. So if you go over that, it is considered a felony. Anything under that is a misdemeanor. They're trying to keep the jails, you know, from not being, um, you know, over, uh, the jails overflowing. Um, and so they've made it a misdemeanor. But at the end of the day, 
you know, a lot of people like employees that are working and stuff, you know, to me, that puts employees at risk to be hurt, to be killed, to be injured, because um, what if they have a gun and they start shooting? What if they take people hostage? You know, it, it, I don't want to bring out this traumatic, you know, talking, but this is the reality of what we're facing in our American system here, you know, and it's really sad and no one is having any accountability for that. And again, with the, all this theft going on and robbery and no accountability, it only places the, you know, the loss from the stores back on the consumer. And if you are a paying consumer, I'm sure your pockets have been hit hard, just like mine and anybody else's that are a paying consumer. So, um, you know, I just want to share some of this latest news to you all. Again, you know, people may not be keeping up. Some people are good at keeping up with the news and some people are not. Um, and then there is one last thing I'm going to talk about um, here before I get off. And I may come back later and talk about some more things. But one of them is why play with that man's freedom like that? Sherry Whitfield and her boyfriend Tyrone repeatedly not speaking over real housewives scene that could have put him back in prison now she was willing to have this man he's on house arrest he served time he got out of prison and i'm going to make this short but you know he served 10 years in prison in 2013 for his part in a ponzi scheme if you remember that and it led investors to losing about five million dollars well he was released earlier this year from a kentucky prison after COVID 19 began spreading throughout the facility okay so following his february release Gill gillian's he and Whitfield reunited in Philadelphia, Philadelphia. The estranged couple previously dated a decade ago and tried to rekindle their relationship in 2016, but ultimately ended things after Gilliams lost his appeal in 2018. According to TMZ, Whitfield and Gilliams, who is currently under house arrest, allegedly haven't spoken since November 6 after the reality star visited him in Philadelphia. Unnamed figures that TMZ says has inside knowledge about the affair reportedly told the outlet that trouble began brewing hours before the couple's scheduled meeting at a restaurant because Whitfield informed Gilliams that the RHOA camera crew will be documenting the experience. Due to Gilliams' house arrest, his movements are restricted, and if he had attended the restaurant, he could potentially could have ended up back in prison. Because Gilliams passed on the opportunity, the production team reportedly told his attorneys that the scene would be edited as if he stood her up. As news regarding Whitfield's relationship went viral, many people expressed that the reality star's decision was jeopardizing Gilliam's freedom. Dang, that's no joke. Why play with that man's freedom like that over reality TV? Sherry, Sherry or Sherry needs a check so badly she was willing to put that man's freedom in jeopardy. I will stop speaking to her also. What part of this made sense to her if he's on home incarceration that normally means he can't go anywhere? Duh. And then these shows thrive on drama and he definitely needs to concentrate on his freedom first. Good luck. Don't sell out to that check. Protect your star player, which is you. Whitfield, who was confirmed to be returning to RHOA in October after three months of cash shakeup rumors, were, was previously a part of the franchise from seasons one through four. She came back as a friend to of show in season eight before ultimately transitioned to becoming a full-time cast member in 2017 during season nine. Whitfield made her final appearance on RHOA in season 10 and left the series in 2018. No additional details regarding Whitfield and Gillian's relationship have been released. Now, let me tell you something uh, before I get off of here. I think that's pretty low down of this woman to do that, Whitfield, to do that to this man. This man has served 10 years in prison. This man is on house arrest. So you know, any anytime you know about house arrest and anybody that's been on house arrest or on house arrest have restricted movements and they can't really go anywhere, they're on house arrest. And so they movements are being monitored. And so for you to try to put this man's freedom in jeopardy, and this is another black woman, this is a black man, and you're gonna try to put this man's freedom in jeopardy because you wanna get a check 
It's all about the money. And it's women after women. And these are black women doing this. Look at uh, Portia. Look at what she did. Portia Williams talking about R. Kelly. You know, what point do you, what point are you trying to make? What purpose is it for you to be talking about R. Kelly at this point? And, uh, you know, in your book, I would not buy your book if it was the last book on earth to read, you know, so I would not buy your book and I'm not, I, I would not promote your book and people that don't buy that book. I mean, this is such sad things that black women are continually coming after black men and, you know, for checks, because that's what happened with a lot of this R. Kelly stuff. It was about money. It was about a check, you know, and we don't have to mention any of those female names that they were doing that and lying. And even with this Portia Williams thing, you know, her sitting up here saying that she heard some screaming in the next room. Why didn't you call the police then? You know, why did you? And she says she spoke to the authority, but, but when did you speak to them years later? When, I mean, I don't know. I don't even want to really get into what she's talking about because it's irrelevant, it's foolish, and it's another black woman with an assault on black men. But this R-H-O-A nonsense too, you already know this man is on restrictions, he's on house arrest and he can't move, and for him to value his freedom and to tell you no so you get mad and you fall out because this man is not willing to do what you want, you know, it's some women out here that got these bullying attitudes, this bullying mentality, and you know, if I don't get what I want, you know, then I'm going to be mad, I'm going to be angry. You don't care nothing about this man's freedom. You care about that chick. And that's what you care about. So Gillian, I hope that you are smart enough not to get caught up in that, to leave her alone. Not just a matter of not speaking, but just move on. Don't even just pray about it. Ask God to release you from that tra traumatic situation because that's what it is, a traumatic situation to release you from that. Because black men go through, uh, you know, uh, trauma and emotional trauma too. And, and we're talking about this book, you know, healing the soul of a woman. This is the Bible study that we've been talking about healing the soul of a woman, uh, how to overcome your emotional wounds. But it's not just, this book is not just for women. This book is for men also because men suffer emotional wounds also, maybe not as much as women, but men do. They don't talk about it because men have always been taught told and taught to be strong men, you know, to handle their business, don't cry, you know, shake it off and things like that and to be tough. But men, black men have suffered a lot of emotional trauma in this world, in society, even in families, even in relationships, marriages, divorces, broken homes, even with their children. And so, um, I, Gillian, just move around move on, pray, get some help, get some therapy, you know, be around positive people and do not let her lead you down a path of being incarcerated again. You know, do the right thing because you know that with a black man, if you mess up, they putting you back in jail with this Michael Avenatti. Look at him. He messed up and he still was on house arrest. You know what I'm saying? All this type of foolishness. But when it comes to black men, they suffer more in the hands of the judicial system and they're going to come after you. They're going to come after you if you mess up because they, that's what they do. It is an unequal scale in America when it comes to black men. And yes, I'm saying it because it's just so unnerving. It's disruptive. It's a distraction. It's a bunch of bafoule. It's wrong. And these women are out for these checks and they will do anything to get a check. And they don't care who's, who they, whose lives they mess up and destroy they don't care. They just want a check. They will sell their souls for a check. And they feel like, I guess, that they're getting even by doing this. But you know what? Uh, the word of God says that, you know, vengeance is mine, thus said the Lord. I will repay. So these women have emotional wounds too. And they're using this to, you know, to get revenge instead of praying and asking God to help them do things the right way, even with the, the judicial system, instead of lying on men, you, you know, there's a way that God expects us to handle ourselves when it comes to trying to get justice. And this type of stuff is not justice for the black man or for any man, but for the black man. So Gilliam, stand your ground. Do not get caught up, you know, get caught up in this stuff with Whitfield. God bless you all on today. Peace out.